without uh, some very uh, important evidence for, for this phenomenon related to Eliana, that really appeared in nature, or, or not in really nature, and they're well known, but no one can pay a lot of attention to them. Then, uh, sorry, then uh, we're going to present uh, what is behind the scenes of our development. Anomalous 
solid sheet production and transmutation. But also they were followed by skeptical critics that were based on pure results or uh, pure methodologies or even measurements and instrumentation used. And of course, the lack of third party reproduction of these experiments. This, this is actually where we stand for us, for the people who haven't followed this uh, evolution for the last 20 years. Well, the idea is are we coming here for a good new definition? Actually, that's not our role. Uh, the kind of technologies is an industry and not a scientific or academic institution. So we don't have a role of uh, providing new definitions or uh, uh, providing new theories or reject theories. On the other hand, we have our responsibility, it is our responsibility to support scientific knowledge in this area and actively support and engage in, in, in international scientific search. So, we consider ourselves uh, uh, having a primary target, which is global penetration of this uh, and, and the ambition for responsibility towards a strategy. Actually, this is a strategy, major, big strategy that needs to take away all the carbon applications and nuclear applications with a new energy form that is there. So we think this strategy, we think that it will feed a new industrialization path and the research and development uh, effort. Well, why commercialization of LGNR is feasible now? First of all, there is a huge and increasing demand of, uh, for clean and safe base energy sources. Renewables like solar or winds are clean energies, but really we cannot rely on them for production. They are dependent on many conditions that we don't control. So they are not based uh, energy. On the other hand, there are still theory, already theoretical and experimental evidence, as it was discussed yesterday during the panel, and all needed knowledge, as a, a, what we say here, all needed knowledge knowledge is there, but is not limited within the short uh, literature provided and published by the ENR experts and guru. We found very interesting uh, and important uh, literature, even though in bits and bytes, in, uh, bits and bytes uh, all around the, in, uh, the different areas, like uh, astrophysics, or metallurgy, or volcanism, Chemistry, of course, nuclear and plasma physics, nanoscience, and others. And if you gather all these puzzles into pieces, then you have the whole idea. Still, we, can, uh, we think that commercialization now is feasible because there are uh, uh, new technologies available. Some of them are related with new materials, and others are related with IT and light information, like uh, NI boards. Available uh, for our uh, uh, experiment, uh, experiments and controls. And something important. Now we know that nature can do LNR. And this is very important because if nature can do, then engineering can do it. Actually, I'll give you a small hint that's not known by engineers. Engineering uh, translation into ancient Greek is mechaniki, which actually means cheating the nature. For a purpose. So that's what we are doing here, gentlemen. We are cheating, or we are trying to cheat the nature for a purpose. So, what gave us the reason to say that nature can do it and why we can be inspired by nature? Uh, there is at least four areas uh, of evidence phenomena related to the LNR. Oh, sorry. Uh, in astral evolution, some corona paradox, LNR as the most probable cause of certain volcanic activity in the Earth crust, and transmutations that can be linked with LNR in uh, malfunctions on high voltage equipment. Uh, you will notice that some of these, uh, in, uh, in during my presentation, there are some numbers like this in Greece, in Greece. Uh, there are references uh, that, uh, with public publications and references which we included and it's available. 
What about astrophysics? Well, it's known for many years now that all low energy nuclear reactions are related to low energy nuclear reactions phenomenon at temperatures lower than 10,000 Kelvin uh, occur during pre main sequence phase in stellar evolution. This is well known. And these anomalies are of low energy are related to enhancement of reactions cross section. Uh, observed in some very heavy, uh, heavy ion fusions and light nuclear fusions relevant to original nuclear synthesis and sterile evolution. So what astrophysics really knows is that this famous network of transmutations appears in nature. And they say, well, the mo most bottom we have in the star, the open the star is. And bottom comes from simple very simple, tiny things called neutrons or protons that really can go up and create this transmutation line in low temperatures. We have the sun corona paradox. Sun corona is uh, sun corona temperatures is, uh, is well known. That's is very, very, very hot, higher than its surface. So can, how can you have a hot area heated, hotter area heated by a colder area? This is a paradox. Well, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, literature in, in, in this by astronomers and astrophysics uh, that indicates that what we know about the sun uh, is not complete. We think that most of, of the transmutations are coming from uh, magma injected from its, uh, from its surface or from its kernel. Well, we, don't, we do know now that most of these transmutation heavy elements, 63 I think, the transportation heavy elements emitted by the sun and we reach it here are producing the corona. This is a well known result. And also, we know that low energy nuclear reactions occur within flux tubes that are uh, with collective magnetic energy. There is terrestrial nuclear uh, reactions happening on the Earth crust, producing geophysical heat production in the Earth crust and resulting volcanic explosions, putting all that mass of magma or mud uh, coming from very many kilometers from down to the Earth to the surface and blowing down with extensive energy that no chemical reaction can do. So there must be something nuclear to be done. No gamma emissions, but compounds and agents in Presence like potassium, thorium, boron result to isotopic abundance changes as a result of hydrogen diffusion in metals or compounds during this activity. Volcanists know all these things. Do we pay attention to them? Also, we don't pay attention to malfunctions. It is taught in most of the electrical engineering universities around the world that sulfur in SF6 really transmutes during malfunctions of high voltage transformers. And uh, for the last three decades, there are a lot of uh, congresses taking place, all facing this phenomenon as a malfunction, and not as an opportunity to search around the, this transmutation and find out what's going on. No one paid attention to this, and it's well known. So, we, uh, following that short introduction, of the problem that we're facing, I'm going to give you now uh, a small uh, indication of what the Hyperion reactor that we built uh, is about. Behind the scenes. So this is the first time actually we present this uh, to the public. Well, uh, we consider that uh, engineering, uh, engineering LENR, like we did in the Hyperion reactor, faces three different problems. One is to face a geometric problem then a material problem, a secondary, and last but not least, a team building challenge. All these three have to be resolved in order to, in, to engineer Eliana. That's what we try to do. Can one were successful on that? Well, let's try to find out what are the geometrical problems. What is the geometrical problem about uh, the Eliana uh, production uh, of a practical device? First of all, we have to deal with hydrogen. In our case, we are dealing with hydrogen. Very little unknown, really, about the structure of hydrogen. We all know that uh, what we have in 
mind like a planet dreaming system of a, of, a, of a problem with an electron uh, on a spherical orbital around that is not correct. Well, uh, not only that. Atomic hydrogen is one of the things, the simplest element that we can uh, analyze in, uh, and we still don't know much about its real structure. Engineering LNR, uh, we need uh, to uh, turn uh, the atomic hydrogen, not uh, gas, into its atomic form. A lot of chemical, like electrochemical and, of course, uh, uh, plasma methods are available. Now, in our experience, from uh, our experiments, we found out that the atomic hydrogen had to be excited to its recurrent state, while electron's trajectory for those who don't know, becomes too elliptical. Very elliptical, and so the whole system of this atom behaves like a diamond. Then, this diamond can really be polarized with a guided target. At first, we introduced a method of doing all these uh, beautiful things. Break the hydrogen, uh, out of the, the atom, the atom from the, the atomic form to its atomic form, secondly, excite the hydrogen and then guide it. And so we introduced the plasma ignition method, other, other people call it ion ball particle method, with low discharges uh, in high pressure, 2 to 8 bars, uh, hydrogen envelopes or environments, using specially designed tungsten or TZM electrodes to get all the Then we had to deal with a metal, we chose nickel for many practical reasons, we, uh, other candidates are available, uh, even though we have tried some of them, we are still sticking on nickel for practical and performance methods and reasons. Uh, what nickel shape should be participating in an alien reaction? We realized very quickly that the nickel crystals from uh, Regardless of how, how, what is the size of the, the raw material we use, we use uh, 5 mi micron powder, are too dense to participate in any LNR reaction. The structure of these uh, uh, crystals are, as already, already known, phase under cubic. So uh, we have to find a way to modify the structure close to a C4 or PM3M. Structure removing some of these atoms either from the surface or from the edges. So we really have to really do something about uh, the structure of the basic element that we use to create a damaged or modified nickel. That's the structure close to what we're getting by the end of our this process. We realized also that only uh, some uh, out of the five physical uh, isotopes of nickel, four could participate on in, a, 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 in a reaction giving excess heat. Well, one, nickel 61, was not a, a willing to participate. And that saved us a lot of costly enrichment methods, which is also a very good evidence for, for the theoreticians to understand why this happens. And finally, we had to protect the modified nickels from the plasma ignition as far as we already know that the temperatures uh, on the surface of the glow charts are, are about 3.5 thousand Kelvin and uh, in the surface and 14 thousand Kelvin, Kelvin in, the, in its kernel. So we had to distribute these nickel uh, modified powder uh, structures around these charts and uh, uh, using a nickel foam of the same size with some porous. In our case, we used 200 microns of porous. Here is a, a short picture of uh, the nickel powders that were used, and this is the nickel foam that were used to hold them around. By the end, uh, nickel, other components or agents that we use, and the ceramics that we use inside the reactor, create of what we call nuclear, <coughs> a, a nuclear or nuclear active environment which is 48 square meters per gram. <laughs> now, then we have to find
find a solution for a problem where nickel and hydrogen need to be too close and not too close. Why? We know that red belt state atoms are short here. They are very elegant and they can uh, be lived only for a short period of time, nanoseconds, even though their size is relatively relative big. So the traveling uh, path should be very, very carefully calculated. The red belt state atoms or we know since uh, March of 2012 that they form bonds with each other. They usually act in pairs or in lattice-like structures. And this is a very important development uh, which was provided from another area, plasma crisis, and it is important for alien astronomy. Also, red-belt state atoms of hydrogen need to travel towards the nickel environment or the nuclear active environment we have created for them. For this reason, we had to create uh, agents, we had to use agents in order to, to help them in this journey. Uh, uh, zinc oxide, magnesia, and zirconia were some of the elements that we used to help the polarization of these uh, 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 creatures towards their destination. Well, for a period of 10 minus 13 of a second that we calculated, the original state proton is very, very close to the electron. This is actually the thumb window we have where the original state nuclei are acting like a masquerade neutron. And finally, globe barriers, globe forces between nuclei are almost zero during this very short period of time in, in, in within these lattice structures. So, LNR, fusion, or whatever you want to call it, uh, reactions are possible, are theoretically possible. Now, what happens if uh, we have nickel crystals, uh, vacancies, and these uh, river state hydrogen atoms involved? Really nothing. Nothing happens. Unless we also do something about the nickel active environment itself. Really what we discovered is that we have to uh, create these vacancies to open or close, like shape, uh, changing their shape at temperatures more than the degree temperature, in the case of nickel is on around 180 degrees. And, and using this technique, we, uh, it, it's easy to get it. Now it is well known and well referenced in the community that nanocharges and are created and traveling in waves with a speed of 5 kilometers per second between the nickel crystal vacancies. This is a well known documented result, which is important because huge electrostatic and magnetic fields are created within these vacancies. And massive interactions occur between the red state atoms and the nuclear active environment. At the end of this journey, we have a band. We have an LDR bursting heating energy. And uh, as long as we have the hydrogen atoms excited and polarized, this is our understanding of what we're really doing up there. But what kind of type of LDR occurs? Even though this is a, a good question for the theoreticians, in this uh, uh, field, uh, we have strong evidence that, uh, 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 about an answer whether strong forces or weak forces are involved for taking uh, this low energy nuclear reaction to place. Is that one of the two or both? Well, we have uh, positive results from the analysis we did with XRF and uh, ICPMS. Uh, in uh, the nickel nuclear active environment and all the other agents before and after the reactions or transmutations. And there was not a line of transmutation. There are a lot of, of transmutations that we measured. Transmutations on the network of uh, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc, potassium and uh, calcium, and lithium, beryllium, and boron that were not present, the last were not present, for the reaction, where did, did they come from? Of course, it was very hard to
to uh, uh, identify short lived species like uh, hydrogen, ethereum, or tritium during this term, uh, maybe because they are the, uh, the high time uh, or the measurements that we're using are not capable of measuring them. And we haven't measured any high energy gamma emission out of the range of 50 keV to 300 keV. So I will give you uh, just a few slides, two slides, for understanding this phenomenon. Uh, all, the, all the above give us strong evidence that uh, we are dealing with a multi-stage dynamic reaction circuit, not with one reaction. And uh, this reaction is heavily dependent on the initial conditions and the geometries involved. If you change one of the conditions or some of the geometries, you don't have the same results or you don't have any results. Also, we understood very uh, quickly that uh, we need feeder theories, not new or new theories, but feeder theories that are consistent with the experimental uh, results that we have. And of course, uh, we committed ourselves months ago, and we repeated here, that all of these data are available to the scientific community uh, for further research or theoretical analysis, after, of course, the licensing of the first generation projects that we're dealing with, that we're developing, and the completion of the building of new testing uh, instruments like an online mass spectrometer that we're building that will help us to avoid too much stealing. We have stick on the data. Understanding the reaction, as we understand, uh, really help us to control the reaction, or even controlling the reaction give us understanding. So what we're doing now in, in, in steps? First of all, we prefer and excite the, we prepare the nickel active environment, nickel, some other agents, and the ceramics around, and we charge it, and we uh, excite it with heating. Secondly, we uh, pump hydrogen inside the reactor where that might exist, if it's not already present. And finally, we bring the uh, reactor hydrogen with, and excite it to its relative state with very short controlled glow charges. That's what we control. Then what we think, or we have good evidence that really happens. First of all, we have the polarization of rhythmic state hydrogen atoms to, uh, from the nanomagnetic fields created in the vacuum. Then we have the interaction of rhythmic state hydrogen at the disguised protons. Still, we have, uh, they have brought into protons and electrons, but atoms, but in rhythmic state, and the proton looks like a disguised neutron. With the heavy, uh, heavy nuclease of the uh, night. Then we have this transmutation of heavy nuclei, uh, followed by gamma emission, with, and heat energy production. But we don't measure this uh, gamma emission. Where does that go? Well, there must be an absorption of that. Maybe. Maybe, we are not sure. Forming uh, new elements from the, uh, using heavy electrons. There is already one uh, theory, but not complete one, but uh, there is a theory stating that. We don't know. Maybe that's what happens. There is strong evidence that this is not completely wrong. I'm talking about the LW theory, as far as we get transmutations of new species from hydrogen up to water. Still, we, have, we don't know which part of the energy, heat energy that we measure, is coming from this phase or from this phase. We can only measure what uh, we uh, getting out in total. And uh, that's why we need more instrumentation. That's why we are building more instrumentation, specially designed for ENR, to give that specific answer to the scientific community. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, already? Right. Yeah. Uh, I will read it. Uh, if it's not uh, I mean, in more uh, improper, I would like to use some of your break. Um, there are other presenters. Well, there's a break afterwards. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Engineering problem as a material problem, of course, had to face a lot of tech uh, challenges, like introducing a mutated ceramics that are inside the reactor. Uh, reactor's metallurgy, in order to, uh, to give us the environment. Uh, 
terms of uh, uh, definitions uh, versus magnetic fields, noises, etc. <coughs> Safety related material, uh, nuclear media or data acquisition and control electronics that can survive in this environment and actually instruments play a very, very important role in uh, developing such devices for us already. Well, uh, there's another challenge uh, that uh, we have to we have to create build team building, not team building only within our, our company, in our R and D teams, but team building with other companies or other institutions, uh, which uh, really help us uh, to pro to provide uh, solutions either in materials or in the protocol development for our testing. Well, does it work? I told you a few things. Does it work? Uh, well, first and second generation reactors were built for uh, different purposes. Were not built, first of all, from the beginning to get the maximum cost. First, we had, had to find out control and then get the cost. Uh, we used a lot of uh, recommendations and literature for calorimetry, which is important here. And we also have, have got very have useful assistance, direct assistance from experts in the field and from international first level of, uh, of research and labs and NI for building a robust uh, protocols and measurement methods. And we created, of course, protocols, <coughs> typically calibration and preparation. And uh, run. All of them are logged using an iPods. Now this is a first appearance of one of our reactors. Uh, actually it is released by a reactor, which consists of uh, uh, hydrogen control, high voltage input control, thermocouples attached inside the reactor or around the reactor, electric heating elements that preheat the reactor up to a point, hydrogen in pumps, coolant circuit, and high voltage plant mechanism interfaces like this uh, spare, plant, spare plant, like uh, L. And of course, spy high for gamma and photo detection. We set up uh, gamma detection very carefully uh, using uh, potassium iodine sensors and other Geiger Muller machines, logged again in uh, uh, national instrument boards. And calorimetry setup, which was one of the resources, so big at the moment, it's one of the resources that we cannot bring it so easily here. We are living actually on a very huge calorimetric environment uh, with uh, water tanks, uh, filters, flow meters, digital flow meters, the reactor, the gamma uh, detector, or the sensors that are measuring all electric input and output that we are getting. Uh, only input that we are consuming. By the end, this is the important thing. To get all these bars, every uh, triggered reaction give a bars. And uh, as long as we excite the hydrogen, uh, the bars really is ongoing. If we don't excite the hydrogen, then it's cooling down. So this is the triggering method that we use for re reading temperatures inside the, the reactor. This is signal. And this is, of course, the pressure involved in during these uh, uh, tests. And, of course, we have to monitor the energy produced by uh, these signals, by these temperature bars. You can see here the result of energy in and out, the plot of uh, uh, coolant flow, and by the end, how much energy uh, we consume versus what, how much heat energy was got out from the reactor. As a result, we present our report these outcomes. Operating temperatures is around 180 to 849 inside the reactor. Output temperature range from 65 to 660 uh, degrees Celsius at the moment. The maximum, of course, uh, has to do uh, with the coolant media that we use, which we don't uh, want to change space within uh, this uh, uh, Phenomenon, during this phenomenon. Each energy bars, like one I showed you before, is 23-27 degrees delta T. And uh, we, use, uh, we consume something less than one to two watt hours to trigger them. The result is 
something between 16 and 92 watt hours. Well, uh, the, uh, this huge uh, uh, difference depends on the different triggering level temperatures that we, uh, we, 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 we use. The higher the level of uh, triggering, the biggest performance we get. By the end of the day, because we are very dumb engineers, we get only one from 1 to 8, 1 to 22 performance. As far as these reactors were not designed uh, for uh, proper calorimetry and cold uh, performance. Also, we report here specific transmutations. Uh, this is only the XRF analysis, of course, and we have highlighted uh, the elements that really uh, give us also isotopics and uh, abundances and transmutations using not XRF but ICPMS analysis. As you will notice, uh, if you see them carefully, uh, but they are very, very important predicted uh, uh, species coming up through these processes. Towards the industrialization path, Alexander Xanthoulis gave some hints to yesterday. Actually, we are still working on an industrial prototype uh, field. Uh, following the technical specs that were released in uh, the November last year, which is a multi-reactor unit of nine reactors, total 45 uh, kilowatt. Industrial prototype tests and certifications are expected within the next months before the end of the year, and of course the setup of production and support lines in 79 countries around the world. Not by us, but also from uh, other partners. Also, a parallel pro program is the design of new instrumentations for ELNR, which is actually an online real-time spectrometer around the LNR Hyperion reactor. Then we can really trace what's going on inside the reactor at the moment it happens. Of course, there are still more to, to come, and these are the important ones. That's why we're here, and that's why we're going to be in the ICCF 7B. We still we don't have standards and protocols for LNR. We have to rely on nuclear industry or chemical industry, which we don't feel that are very close to what we're doing. There is the need of an independent international scientific and standard organization for LNR. And we're going to ask uh, ICCF participants and today's participants uh, to play a role in this. And of course, there is always the need for cooperation, cooperation in further research, further development, or further new vertical applications. Here is the list of reference that you can get uh, from our site or from sticks that we have created, or we can send it to you if you want in your email. And I would like to thank you for uh, the opportunity to, uh, uh, that you gave to us for putting together all the pieces in one place. Are there any questions that I can ask you rather quickly? Or as this pressure from this gentleman. I'm sorry, we have an extra there. There's a lot of question. There is a break in the middle, so please feel free to talk okay. to John and the, during the break, but I want to make sure the next session starts in time. Correct. I will be happy to, ask, to answer any of your questions.
after would be preferred. Yeah, because I'm in a presentation I want to catch the end of, and I'm going to run across the street since it's over. I'll be there.
and uh, we discuss the non-party kind of monomethyl. In the case of monomethyl, we need to uh, oxidation of the non-party rather than carbonyl. Or we can use the binary non-party this is the basic uh, concept of designing something. This is a actual uh, hand image transmission electron microscope photos. This is one micro. Already, but material. However, if we 
Thank <laughs> you. 